Hey guys, how's it going? Hope you've been well. This video is gonna be talking about my Toyota Sequoia, 2007 Toyota Sequoia, first gen Sequoia. If you wanna learn more about the Sequoia, I did a whole video up here about why I have a Sequoia, why I like the Sequoia, kind of a whole walkthrough of the interior and exterior of the rig and just kind of a deep dive into all things first gen Sequoia. So watch that video up there if you want that. So I've done some stuff since then now. So I've added some bigger tires, new wheels, two inch suspension lift, a new roof rack up here. So this is a Prinsu rack and it should be launched on the website by the time I upload this video. If it's not yet, they promise me they're gonna get it up very soon. So a new rack option for the Sequoia from my friends at Prinsu. I put in a new head unit, did a couple other little things that we'll talk about kind of through the whole video, but in keeping with the whole concept of the Sequoia, kind of a lower priced, more basic rig, I'm not gonna call it a budget rig necessarily because I'm not really just buying random Amazon crap and throwing it on. I'm gonna like put legit stuff, but just not go too crazy with the build. So basically kind of in keeping with that, I did install the suspension lift just to kind of show you. I, I think I filmed it and I'll give a couple pointers and stuff that I kind of ran into. But I just did that in my garage here, just to kind of show you, you don't need to spend a whole lot of money. It's relatively basic, simple. I was gonna take it to a shop because I'm, I'm lazy and busy, but for you guys, I just went ahead and did it myself. And it was pretty straightforward. I did, however, take it to a shop. If you're wondering to get the uh, timing belt changed, I had some like camshaft leaks and they just did everything and I don't want to mess with it. So timing belt, water pump, a couple other seals and stuff replaced. And they also did the UBJs and the LBJs, so the lower ball joints and the upper ball joints. So this truck is now pretty dialed and good for another 100,000 plus miles without anything but oil changes, hopefully. So yeah, I think without wasting too much of your time, I'll just take the camera off the tripod and then we'll just kind of get, get to it. Yeah. So here we go. All my chickens hanging out over here, just congregated saying, Mike, what are you up to? What are you doing over there? What are you doing over there? Maple too. Maple's like, what are you doing over there? Huh? Well, I'm making a video on this sweet baby here. So the Sequoia, I really like this truck uh, SUV technically, but man, it's so sunny out, like the white to expose for it, you don't even see the wheels, but we have the Relations race wheels, uh, RR7s in the matte bronze. They're super dirty, kind of muddy right now. And then the Toyo uh, Open Country AT, threes and the size of these is roughly a 33 inch but it's a 285 70r17 so for a little bit with this tire i put these on before i lifted it and it rubbed pretty intense all right well here it is excuse me i'm sick right now but this is the sequoia at factory height so i've already done some cutting and trimming back here because i wanted to see how bad this rub was gonna be. So remove this little mud flap, trimmed this plastic portion up there and bent back the pinch weld as well. Uh, so I've cleared up about as much room as you can here without doing a full tub. And I don't know if you can tell, right here is actually basically the firewall into the cab, and that is the main part that's rubbing. So I can't do much for that really, unless I wanna hack that out and basically do a small tub there. Uh, so the rubbing's pretty bad on no lift with 33s, but I did wanna try it out just to see. And the rear, as is often the case, no issues running 33s even at factory height. So close to being able to fit without lifting it. But like I said earlier, my suspension is pretty shot. The bushings are pretty bad. So I figured I would just swap to new suspension and might as well toss on a little lift. So that's what we're gonna do. I think, I think I'll put this down in the video description below. I've been 
putting a lot of new wheels on my rig, so I may be getting this confused. I think these are negative 12 offset. So the negative 12 offset is kind of what I like for a daily driver. You got like just a little bit of poke from the fender flares, but nothing too crazy. Toyo Open Country AT3s, been running them on a few rigs for a while. Really like that tire. So been happy with it. Uh, this up here is just a little tint that I put on the fogs and then replaced the lights with some Amazon cheapies. And I'll dive into suspension here in a second, maybe overlay some, some other clips if I can find them that I filmed. And then the Prinsu roof rack, the Sequoia already has holes drilled into it. Well, not holes drilled into it, but from the factory has some threaded holes. So you yank your other roof rack off and Prince, you has a pretty good video install guide, but basically you'll have two here, one here and two here. And so those pull the factory rack off, plop the Prince you on and you're off to the races. Super easy install. And as always with Prince racks, low profile, these bars you can kind of put wherever you want. It came with like, I don't know, five more crossbars that I didn't actually put on here. So I just kind of have them spaced. If you're wondering about the moon roof, it does block it a little bit. If you opt to put in this front bar, you could probably not put in this front bar, but since this is so long here to the front, this does get a little wobbly without the front bar. So I went ahead and put the front bar in. But from the inside, you can see that it really only blocks that front portion of your moonroof. So not too obtrusive. It's a super easy install for a good looking, full length, low profile, made in America roof rack. So I'll link that down below. Good option, worth checking out. So I'm actually just gonna show you what I ordered. So this was my order here if you wanna recreate the same thing. I bought all this from first gen off-road. So this is my whole order here. These springs, coil spring isolator, add-on string strut assembly with new top hats, Dobinson rear shocks, the Bilstein B8 5100 series, fronts, rear progressive springs with the two inch lift and then extended front and rear sway bar links. So the 5100 is adjustable. So he adjusted that, Josh over at first gen off road adjusted that for two inch lift height. So rather than messing with the springs and pulling them out and put them back in and all this crap that I didn't feel like doing, he'll do that for a small fee and it's well worth it. So these went in, uh, you can, with the two inch lift, it's safe to still just continue using the factory upper control arms if you wanna save a little bit of coin. Anything above a two inch lift, they do recommend you going to an aftermarket upper control arm, but I decided just to stick with the OEM here. So installed this, some of these are a little bit difficult to get to, but overall the front is super easy. You'll disconnect the sway bar. I extended those links anyway, so I had to do that. Uh, this whole unit, this shock and spring assembly comes pre-assembled. If you opt for it, like I did, and just goes right in. And then here on this side, you can see the sway bar links. So again, this isn't gonna be like a total dedicated off-road trail rig or anything. I love sway bars, obviously, on an on-road vehicle. So I just extended them so they would work right. You can see right here where the tire does kiss the frame at full lock, but uh, it's no big deal to me. So Basically, we got the Bilstein's in here. Um, it's all pretty straightforward. I sprayed some kind of uh, liquid wrench type stuff on all the bolts to take everything off. I bought this pre-assembled from First Gen Off-Road. So you can kind of talk to Josh over there. He's super helpful and he can put these together for you. Otherwise, you can reuse your old coils or put them together yourself. Uh, but it's kind of a pain. You need a little 
spring compressor. I have a set. It's always kind of weird and sketchy using them. On the passenger side, this third bolt actually was super hard to get to. Uh, so that was the only that was the only kind of hard thing because I couldn't get to it with a standard uh, socket. So I had to use uh, a closed end wrench like this. And for some reason, this is the biggest 14 millimeter I have, I guess. And I don't have a like a pipe that fit around this. So I just had to use He-Man strength to get that off. But uh, all good here. And here is the rear suspension. Here's the extended sway bar as well. Uh, and the shock and then the new spring you can see there. So the rear is a little bit more of a pain than the front, mostly because the design is the top of the shock bolts in up here and it's very difficult to access. So that's by far the biggest pain of the whole install. So real quick, PSA, this factory jack trick. Uh, I just have a two by four and a two by four. And if you jack that up with the sway bar disconnected, you can get the new lifted longer springs in without needing any kind of spring compressor. Actually, there's plenty of room just to get them shoved up in there. All right, so here's the real quick finished. This is the extended uh, sway bar links. This is the bigger shock here, the bigger spring. So getting this shock bolt out is a pain. Mine just spins here. So you basically have to put a wrench on that and then turn the bolt off. And that is just a pain to get to. So getting this part off, which is, excuse the mess, which is up in here basically. So you gotta kind of bend your arms around all funky. So I took everything off out of the way, took the coil off and the sway bar uh, links off so that I could get at that the easiest. And it was a pain, but relatively doable. Uh, so you'll disconnect the brake line, disconnect that. That frees up the axle quite a bit to get everything else off. This bolt comes off easy and there's nothing holding. There's no like bolts or anything holding the coil in place. So that just comes right out. And real quick, to get the sway bar links out, there's actually a little Allen. So you put the Allen in to hold this bolt, otherwise it'll just spin freely forever. So you put a wrench on the nut and an Allen in there to keep the bolt from spinning. And that's how you get those off uh, for both sides. But pretty easy. If you're like a little bit mechanically inclined, you could easily knock out front and rear suspension in one day solo in the garage. I did it by myself uh, and it took kind of a couple hours and a few hours. I just did it over the course of two different nights when I just had a little bit of time, but it honestly rides really well, rides way better than it did stock. Again, my stock suspension was getting pretty tired. A lot of the bushings were pretty worn. So this kind of tightened everything up and really now it, it it drives really great. This is a perfect setup. So because of the Sequoia, it's kind of weird. It's my, it's really sloped downhill here. So it still maintains a little bit of rake. So I'm about one inch higher in the rear than I'm in the front, which is perfect for me. I love a little bit of rake in, in trucks and SUVs, obviously because you're gonna weigh them down a lot of times. So I would recommend a two inch front and a two inch rear. None of this like leveling kit Bull crap, you don't wanna be squatted. So just do a two inch all around and you'll be super happy. Inside, not a whole lot new. I wanted a CarPlay unit. Sorry, it's so bright here, having a hard time. So I got the cheapest one and just had Best Buy install it with a rear view camera. So this is like a Boss something rather. It's like a 10 inch screen, uh, CarPlay and Android Auto and Bluetooth and all that stuff. And it works fine. It is wired CarPlay, so they have the little USBs coming out down here. I hook it up. And then a phone mount here, I'll show you. With the phone mounted, some things to be aware of. So this is a MagSafe magnetic mount here. Sorry for this when there's like 
lens flares it doesn't like to focus. So this needs to be positioned, for me anyway, I'm kind of OCD, in a place where you can still see the time on your Apple CarPlay when you're plugged in, but obviously it is a stock shifter. So it needs to be out of the way. You can see it's in front. The shifter is in front of the phone. So you need to just put that <laughs> in such a way there. So this is just a little 20 millimeter ball that I pulled the dash out. It's super easy to pull out and pop two bolts through. And I kind of use these rubber isolating washers. I don't know if you can kind of see them kind of compressed down there. So on top and underneath, and this thing is super, super solid now. No rattles, no noise or anything. So this is a MagSafe mount, not a charger, just a mount. So it's super strong. The mounts are always stronger than the charger. So this, since it's wired CarPlay, I got to plug the cable in anyway. I got a non-charging mount. And this, let me see if you can see here. This is basically, these, this mount has a 17 millimeter ball. Uh, and they sell 17 millimeter to 20 mil millimeter adapter. So a little ball goes in here into the 20 millimeter adapter here. And then you have a bunch of adjustability with that setup. And I love it. I've been moving a lot to the MagSafe mounts just because they're so easy to put on there and grab off and put on. And when you're not using, the chargers aren't as strong. They're, they're strong enough for most stuff unless you're really, really romping it. And it does matter with the case. So this is a whatever, magback case that has a pretty strong like magnetic adhesion basically with mounts that I've noticed. So that's the setup here. And that's basically all I've changed out on the inside. I have been, quick maple and car sickness update, been taking maple and Atreyu on rides every single day in the back of this. So it's been serving its purpose as kind of my, you know, Ashley doesn't like when I call this thing a beater because it's still, you know, it's not really a beater. It's still decently nice. Uh, but this is the car that I own that I care least that the dogs puke in. <laughs> so Maple's puked a couple times on these rides and basically just trying to get her acclimated to riding in the car and decided I will use the Sequoia for that because they can look out the window. I can cover the seats all up so Trey is not scratching them and ripping holes in the leather. And then this will catch some of Maple's puke when she, she needs to puke, uh, it's pretty gross. But then I also bought these little uh, door panel covers basically, uh, because the tray was kind of scratching that up and then he can step on the window by accident. And sometimes I want to keep it up a little bit if there's like some dogs and he's going crazy or put it down. So I bought these little covers that just kind of pop right in to the door and kind of cover that whole section up. So this has been a nice little dog back seat that I've been using uh, just to take them on daily rides in. I did, I don't know if you can tell, got the front windows tinted. I actually got uh, the Tacoma, the Sequoia, the Sprinter, the Jayco, and my Tundra front ceramic tint just because I'm parking outside a lot more with working on the house and stuff. So. I want to keep the sun off through the summer. And then I did buy these little wind, or not wind, rain kind of gutter channel things. And it comes with, you know, for this and this, but I never like them on the front windows. Kind of blocks some visibility and I just don't really like them. So I just installed them on the two backseat windows. And that's just so you can crack the windows, let a little breeze in or whatever. And that's about it, really. I talk about this from time to time. I always keep a hitch pin in here just in case you need to use it as like a recovery point or whatever. So keep that and you can fit a full size, uh, roughly 33 inch spare underneath, but it doesn't really fit well. You really have to squeeze it in there. It almost, touches or it may even honestly touch the track bar there uh, when it flexes out. I don't think it touches, but there's like a millimeter of space. So this is absolutely the biggest tire you can fit under here. Your mileage may vary. I asked and kind of saw people in the forums that said, oh yeah, this fits no problem. For me, it didn't really fit no problem. I took some air out and it's really just kind of wedged up in there. It's not ideal, but it's, it's fine for me. And you do have a full size spare 
underneath, so that's nice. And then in the back, I just wanted to show real quick, I took one of the sides out to show you a little sleeping pad. So this is like a nice little four inch, super comfortable, like so, so comfortable. My friend Danny actually slept on that uh, all weekend. It was like, oh, it was great. Not in here, we took it in the house. But basically in the Sequoia, without removing the second, the middle row seat, this can fold up and then you have a full, basically 75 inches, a little more than 75 inches, but this mat is 75 inches. So you can sleep on this whole thing. So if you wanna take both the seats out, I would just get two of these mats because this is perfectly 50 inches across. And this is a 25 inch mat. They don't sell a 50 inch mat, they sell like a 54 inch, which would kind of wedge in there. So if you want a single bed here, 25 inches, great. And then if you want to double, then you have 50 inches and it's basically perfectly that mat dimension. So I just wanted to show that real quick for those that want to camp in the rig. All right, hey, sorry about that. My mic was doing something funny. So this is the next day, doing an outro. In conclusion, love the Toyota Sequoia. This is one of my favorite purchases. I can't really put my finger on it. Like, I don't really know why, like it doesn't, quite make me feel the feelings that a Land Cruiser does, but it's just so practical and spacious and I haven't known it long enough to really speak for myself, but from all reports, super reliable. So I really like this. I really like this first gen Sequoia. My Tundra, my new Tundra is still my daily, but this is kind of my secondary daily sometimes if I know it's gonna get beat up a little bit, or again, taking the dogs out for their daily ride to get them acclimated. Well, really, a tray is acclimated. Just getting maple acclimated. Loving it, loving it. Uh, quick couple of announcements, quick couple of announcements. I will be at Overland Expo PNW out in Bend or Redmond, Oregon. This weekend, I think I'm gonna upload this video either the day before, either Thursday or Friday. Uh, it's this weekend, Friday, the July, I don't know, 8th or something, Saturday and Sunday. I'll be there Friday and Saturday at the Diamondback booth with my Green Tundra. So if you're in the area, come out, say hey, check it out, it's a good event. Uh, and then my footers on my house actually got poured yesterday. So I'm gonna do a kickoff video of kind of my homestead build and that whole series. So if you have any questions on the homestead or anything that you want me to talk about with that, leave that down in the comments below as well. And then, yeah, I'll try to link to everything I talked to down in the video description. I think that's it, guys. Until next time, take care.